Do you know that Web3 social media is giving people more power? Yes, you heard that right. We all know that in Web2, a person's identity can change. One identity is used to sign into Google, another for Facebook, and so on. Even if each of these identities uses the same email address, they all require separate accounts with their own login information. In exchange for the convenience of using its platform, you as a user grant each network access to your data. That platform then sells your data and, in a sense, owns your audience. Web3 changes that scenario by allowing you to use a single identity that is linked to your digital wallet. Web3 allows people to connect their unique wallet to an application or platform rather than creating a separate account on each platform. And with that connection, a person can choose what information to share, no more receiving hundreds of emails in your inbox simply because you made a purchase. When you connect your wallet to a business's platform, you can choose whether to give them access to your email address. Another major drawback of Web2 is that your identity does not follow you from application to application. In Web2, for example, a person can sign into Twitter with thousands of followers and hold influence on the platform as a result of those followers. Because that person's identity remains with the application, when they create an account on Discord or another platform, they essentially create an entirely new identity with no followers on that platform. The power they wield as a brand is retained by each network. This all changes in Web3 because the influence you have on one platform follows you when you sign up for another. The rise of Web3, powered by decentralized networks, has been facilitated by the growing dominance of cryptocurrencies and blockchain. This transformative internet movement is beckoning a paradigm shift in how we interact with the goal of restoring power to users and creators. Web3 is a catch-all term for several ideas and futuristic visions of decentralization in which community-powered, ad-free, and self-monetized content will reign supreme. Although Web3 will disrupt many existing Web2-based business models, the creator economy is expected to benefit the most from this ongoing revolution in comparison to a reinvented social media paradigm. In the Kermit version of the internet, for example, content creators are frequently subject to the whims and fancies of the platforms they use to share their content. This leads to several issues, including unjustified content censorship, content demonetization, and even deplatforming. At the moment, many Web2 platforms retain complete control over the content, severely restricting creators. Consider Facebook owning the photos you upload to the platform. You may have taken the photos, but Facebook now owns them. At the same time, users' data is monetized, resulting in even more limited value. Even though they are the driving force behind these platforms and the primary reason content creators exist, Web3 solves this problem by restoring full control to content creators. Web3, by leveraging the power of blockchain and cryptocurrencies, enables creators to tap into a wide range of monetization opportunities while also rewarding users for their continued participation and patronage. This results in a circular economy free of the constraints imposed by centralized platforms and intermediaries. Consider for a moment the idea of rewarding users for using the internet. Besides, we spend a lot of time on one or more Web2 platforms, whether it's for reading blogs, watching videos, or simply browsing the internet. The platforms we use generate billions of dollars, but users never receive anything in exchange for their devotion. Web3 drastically alters this by rewarding users for their participation. There are currently several blockchain-powered Web3 platforms, like web browsers, video sharing platforms, blogging platforms, and social networking platforms, where both creators and consumers can earn rewards. These platforms, powered by their native tokens, bring a symbiotic model to the internet, where everyone benefits, rather than a zero-sum approach, where one party must win so the other can lose. To accomplish this, Web3 social networks include built-in payment layers, eliminating unnecessary middlemen and costs. They are also fully interoperable, allowing users to easily buy, sell, and trade native assets across platforms. For example, content creators can use NFTs to monetize their work and sell it across multiple marketplaces. They can also create custom subscription models and add-on features for their communities by leveraging the underlying platform's native token to open up new revenue streams. All at the same, 
Web3 platforms enable content creators to tap into the expanding metaverse by allowing them to implement a variety of play-to-earn, learn-to-earn, and other similar incentivized programs for their communities. Community members can earn platform native tokens by participating in these activities, which they can then use to buy more features on the platform, reward creators, or exchange for other tokens. In the context of social networks, a native token can also grant holders the right to vote on the network's future. In contrast to Web2, where users have little to no say in platform development, Web3 delegated this responsibility to stakeholders. Token holders can use their hands to shape the platform's future by voting on proposals that are best for their communities. These proposals may cover a wide range of topics, like adding new platform features, deciding on future upgrades, making changes in existing development and marketing teams, and much more. Web3 encourages a creator-driven economy while rewarding consumers for participation, ushering in a new era of social networks. Unlike big tech's Web2 paradigm, Web3 envisions an ecosystem of social and interoperable networks in which all users can finally own a piece of the financial pie. Web3 social networks, driven by decentralization, will return power to the community by granting content creators full ownership of their work. These social networks, in collaboration with other Web3 services, will enable censorship-resistant, ad-free, and creative-centric ecosystems, thereby providing equal opportunities for all, whether it's the rise of community-driven global social networks. The growing acceptance of community-focused decentralized autonomous organizations, or the emergence of AR, and VR-powered immersive experiences, Web3 social networks are igniting a transformation centered on the community rather than the gatekeeper's interests alone. It will also have a beneficial effect on e-commerce and user privacy. Have you ever seen a t-shirt you wanted to buy from an online store but held off because you didn't want to be bombarded with marketing emails for a year after your purchase? That store will have a permissions checklist in Web3, and you can decide which of your personal information to share with that store. It will also greatly improve our healthcare decisions and records. Today, approximately 60% of misdiagnoses occur because the doctor did not have access to the necessary data. Web3 will also facilitate the sharing of medical data in special circumstances like moving to a new state, an emergency when the patient is unable to discuss their medical history or when a patient is unaware that they must divulge certain details due to a misunderstanding of the significance. Besides that, it will not be necessary to request that records be sent to another healthcare facility only to have those records lost in transit. People can reduce the chances of their data being lost or incorrect due to human error by having control over their own data. Also, your digital identity will extend beyond who you are and what you buy. Some universities are already experimenting with the idea of incorporating diplomas, degrees, and certifications as NFTs, which would link them to your digital identity. There will be no need to contact university personnel to locate and send a copy of your transcripts whenever another organization requests them. Simply connect your wallet to that organization and grant them access to your university credentials. Because these tokens are stored on the blockchain, both users and businesses can be confident in their accuracy and security as validated, trusted data. Digital tokens can also be used to validate an individual's attendance at an event. This will allow businesses to offer new perks to people who attended events without having to spend time going through records to verify attendance. All right, guys, this wraps up our video for today. Be free to drop your opinion in the comment section below. Also, do well to like this video and hit the subscribe button to gain access to more interesting videos from this channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.